Tokyo Joypolis is known to many people for housing the first ever spinning coaster to go upside down. A lot of people think it's time travel at Silver Dollar City, but sorry guys, this ride came first. It's called Gekyon Live. It's a Gerslauer, height of about 16 feet, max speed 24 miles per hour, length of 984 feet, and is a single inversion. It is indoors, and it is in the heart of this park, which is Tokyo Joy Plus. Now, this review will be very different from the other ones I've done because I am combining the park review and the coaster review into one video because Tokyo Joy Plus is extremely small. It is only home to two rides, and I'm going to talk about the other one a little bit later. But this place is almost more of an arcade than a theme park. And because there isn't a whole lot to say about either one, I figured I would just make one video to sum up the entire experience. So starting first with the park, Joy Plus is located inside of a mall. And yes, you can access the rest of the mall from the park. And it's in a very touristy part of Tokyo. That location is Odaiba. It's kind of the technology district, a lot of up and coming stuff. You can find a big Ferris wheel in that area. There's also some really cool buildings. So as a result, Tokyo Joy Plus was actually really crowded while we were there. It was one of the few parks in Japan that was actually busy. We waited probably 30 minutes at least to ride Gekyon Live. But first we had to get in the park. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You do have to pay to enter. You cannot just walk in, like in a place like Mall of America or West Edmonton Mall. There is a gated entrance. However, it is not very expensive, and that's because once you pay to get in, you also have to pay per ride. You can get an all-inclusive ride package, aka unlimited rides on the two attractions, but personally, I'm not sure I really recommend that. I didn't think Gekyon Live was one of those coasters that you'll really want to do more than once. The other ride is cool, but at the end of the day, you might actually save money by just buying a one ride ticket for each of them if you do want to do both rides. So what we did is we paid to enter and then inside you'll find a gift shop and in that gift shop you'll find little vending machine dispensers where you can go and get your ticket for the coaster. And a good portion of the floor space of the park is actually made up of the rides queue, which is not themed or anything. It's literally just a bunch of switchbacks. But what is so interesting about it is that while we were there, there was a show going on on the stage that they have in the center of the park, aka right next to the ride entrance. And so while you're waiting in line, they had this whole thing going on. And unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to film any of it because there was a very strict no cameras allowed. You could film in the park all you want, but this show, for whatever reason, they had big signs up saying, hey, no filming, and if anyone was caught taking pictures or video, they went over to them and pretty much told them, yeah, put that away. So, very strange. I'm not entirely sure why, but it was like sensory overload. There were a bunch of people out there. They had projections. What you can see on the stage is they, they already have projection mapping on these blocks to create these different designs and patterns. So now imagine a crazy dance show going on in addition to that projection mapping and of course because I don't speak Japanese I had no idea what the show was about yeah it was like really weird it was cool though now the one thing I want to say about Joy Plus is that essentially the whole park is kind of revolved around games the coaster is a game the other ride that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit is also a game and they have a whole section for arcades so everything here is interactive so first the coaster Think of Guitar Hero, but on a ride. When you board the attraction, it seats four people, and on your restraint is a different colored button. And that button is associated with the icon that will appear on the screen that you try to line up with and then you press it. It's exactly like Guitar Hero. And you'll get a score at the end of your ride, and you're trying to beat the other people sitting next to you. And that's all done while you're going through the coaster's layout, or at least the first part of it. You kind of go through this whole different experience, and you're waiting you're playing this game and then it has this drive tire launch that sends you around this turn and through that one inversion and then the rest of the ride in this back section you can't really see most of it but essentially it's kind of this wild mouse area just kind of goes around some hairpin turns it's an okay ride I think that it's just very cool to do because of how unique it is I've never done anything like it before so in that regard I recommend it I mean you don't need much time here at all the only reason we spent as much time here as we did is because it was a decently long wait for the coaster which I think was partially due to the fact that it was raining when we went here 
And so I think, therefore, everyone was like, oh, we'll go inside. Oh, hey, let's go to Joypolis. I think we actually spent more time walking around the mall than we did in the park. Because it was a pretty cool mall. It went up to, like, I think six different stories, maybe more. It was big. So while you're there, if you do want to go shopping, you want to go to a food court, they have plenty of options in there, but you won't find any of that specifically in the park. You have to exit the park to do that. As for the other ride, it's this weird flat that swings back and forth and it rotates and you have pedals on it. So you're standing up like on a stand-up coaster, but as you're moving your feet with these pedals, as this game is going around, it is spinning and the goal is to get to spin a lot. Like this coaster here, I've never seen anything like this ride and I didn't know it existed here either. So when I'm looking at it, I'm like, what the heck is this thing? Very strange. I did not do it, however. I only rode the coaster. But that's about it for Joy Palace. I mean, as you can see, there's not a whole lot to it. And I think that's really the point of it. It's not meant to be an all-day experience. It's just to be that attraction that while you're in the mall, hey, you can go here and play some games and get some cool experiences. So I think that's the whole idea around it. Do I recommend it? I mean, personally... I think that if you are limited on time, this would be a place that's okay to skip. I think it's kind of neat. I mean, the park looks nice, lots of blues and blacks, the escalators are very sleek, kind of has this whole Tron look to it. So like, it's good vibes and stuff. I think if you're going to be in this part of Japan doing some of the other touristy stuff and you kind of have a whole day dedicated to that, then I mean, sure, yeah, go for it. I wouldn't plan your entire trip around doing this place. There's a lot of other cool places in Japan that I think are a lot more interesting. The main advantage to this place is that it is indoors. So if you have a day that's really crappy weather, you don't want to be outside, this is a good place to go. But that's going to do it for my review of Tokyo Joy Plus and Gekyon Live. Let me know down in the comments below if you've had the opportunity to visit this place. If you agree with my thoughts and of course you can stay tuned for more coaster and park reviews here at coaster studios and i'll see you guys next time